And welcome back. Now, former KwaZulu Natal Hawks head Johan Boysen says that he feels vindicated. He made that comment after the NPA announced that it was dropping racketeering charges against him. The National Director of Public Prosecutions, Shamila Batoy, yesterday told Parliament that the NPA had decided to drop charges against Boysen and his co accused following a panel that reviewed uh, past decisions. Now, we join on the line by uh, General Johan Boysen, and in studio we have Gabriel Krauser who's a Palmer Trust Fellow and is also with the Institute for Race Relations. Thanks so much to both of you for coming through. Uh, General Boys, and if I can just start with you, uh, how did you receive uh, the NPA's decision and uh, the implications that this has for you? Uh, good morning. I received a call from my attorney early yesterday indicating to me that he had received a communique from the NDPP's office that they intended to draw in the charge against myself and the rest of the Cato Manda group. And uh, with regard to the dropping of charges, these are just the racketeering charges. The other charges, of course, remain, and uh, those are charges of murder. Uh, there's also housebreaking, defeating the ends of justice. So um, uh, how do you feel about that? And, and, and do you think that your prospects will be good to have those dropped as well? I think it's necessary to explain the situation. Um, in 2012, I was charged for racketeering emanating uh, from a shooting incident, one incident in uh, Halwick, where two people died during a shootout with police. Uh, one of them was a wanted uh, suspect in a police killing. The other one was his bodyguard. Now, the rest of the charges that I did face at the time related to that particular incident. You would recall in 2012, I took the decision by Advocate Norcor Chiba to prosecute me for racketeering and for the murder case in Howick. I took that on review in the High Court in KwaZulu Natal. And in 2012, uh, Mr. Justice Gorman in the High Court in KwaZulu Natal ruled that there was absolutely no evidence to sustain the charges leveled against me of racketeering and the, as well as the charges, uh, the, the murder charges. So the murder, the murder charge, and uh, uh, I need to correct the, uh, the, the rest of the charges. It, it, it's actually one murder case. Um, the possession of an AK-47 and then the possession of ammunition, which, uh, um, which was something that was uh, uh, fabricated by Advocate uh, Selo Maema, the lead prosecutor in this matter. There was no, and had never been any evidence to that effect. And that was borne out by the judgment of Judge Corbin uh, at the time. So my take on the matter is that all the charges against myself will be withdrawn within the next week, uh, as well as the rest of the accused. And the, the, the predicate offenses will be referred to the uh, DPP in KwaZulu-Natal for consideration. So, General Boysen, you are on record stating that you believe that the charges against you from the onset were politically motivated. Explain to us why you believe that to be the case. Uh, how would you become involved or embroiled in uh, some uh, political uh, mechanization here with regard to these charges? Well, one only needs to look at who the suspects were that I investigated. Some of them were family members of the as well, uh, President Mr. Jacob Zuma. I'm talking about Edward Zuma, and they wanted me to release 15 million rand which I had frozen in a corruption investigation. Uh, subsequently, uh, there was an attack arriving with two million rand. Um, I ordered a sting operation during which I could, the police was arrested. Um, subsequently, a uh, uh, businessman that is linked to um, Edward Zuma was also arrested. And you had intercepted a call uh, to Edward, the by uh, Toshan Pandey, uh, the businessman, to Mr. D. Bombs, who was a deputy of Mr. Jake Jim, uh, which revealed that it was decided there that my wings will be clipped. Furthermore, I've been involved in investigations, or I actually supervised the investigations against two members of the then legislature in KwaZulu Natal, Mike Mabuikuru and Penny Goyen, um, in the so called Amigo case. And furthermore, I've also been involved in the very well known uh, investigation. Um, there were two legs. The main leg was uh, uh, conducted by Colonel Kurt Zulofsen from the Western Cape. The other one was uh, conducted by Brigadier Simon Morissella 
And I've been assisting him in the KwaZulu Natal League into the looting of the, uh, the, the Secret Services account, the so called slush fund. So, looking at, you know, how that takes care of the political, um, you know, allegations, yeah. can you still hear me, General Boyzik? I can hear you. Um, so, what about all the reports that have come out about the Cato Manor death squad, as it was dubbed? If you look at the number of people, the number of murders that were investigated, there were more than 200 witnesses. Um, you had IPED investigators coming forward. You had pathologists. You had ballistic experts all coming forward to testify with regard to these killings. Can you vouch for those who are implicated, who were implicated under your watch, that there was nothing untoward that happened with regard to all of these murders? Let me just, let me just hit the record straight. There aren't 200 witnesses. It's once again a fabrication by Atletzello Marima and a narrative that he in, in conjunction at the time with the Sunday Times were running. Um, maybe I can help you. I can explain to you that a number of those witnesses have already been discredited. The lead, uh, the ballistic expert in this matter, Captain Mangena, who is now Colonel Mangena, at least the in three disciplinary hearings relating or related directly to the shootings of some of these individuals. And in each of those instances, he made concessions and he con contradicted himself. As a matter of fact, he also testified at my disciplinary hearing related to one of the shooting incidents. And, and in, in his findings, the chairperson at the Ketna, Sia Kassim, um, actually discredited Mangena for, uh, for the evidence that he gave. Um, I cannot vouch for each and every individual uh, that took charge uh, along with me. I wasn't present when, when those shootings occurred. Um, I can only rely on what I see in the evidence in the dockets. Um, I've gone through those dockets. There are 23 of those dockets. And there is very little of any evidence that, that directly link any of the accused to any of the offences. Uh, let me come to you, Gabriel, uh, listening to General Boys and looking at the latest turn of events. First and foremost, are you surprised by this latest turn of events? And of course, Advocate Batoy also talking about, you know, this credibility challenge that the NPA faces. How do they get over that? Yeah, so I'm not really surprised. I think, uh, as General Boysen's pointed out, there's a lot of reason to believe that there was uh, political motivations to go after him in the first place, to stop him from pursuing very powerful and, and, and vested interests in this country's sort of corridors of power. And so for the charges to be dropped with a kind of changing of the guard in the NPA, therefore doesn't seem like a surprise. But as you say, there's this credibility gap, and it, it dates back at least until about 2003, where the NPA seems to continually be at war with itself. You have one faction accusing another faction of peddling corruption and protecting the criminals, and then the other faction comes to power and says, well, actually, it's you guys that have been doing it all along. One thing about a court case is... If there's a court case, all of the evidence is laid out and the public gets to see the reasoning behind a decision to find an innocent verdict or a verdict of guilt. When the, NP itself makes this when the NPA itself makes the decision to drop the charges, we don't know exactly what the reasons for that are. And I think that while the general, uh, it's fully reasonable for him to feel vindicated, of course there'll be many South Africans out there who would like to know exactly why the charges were dropped and because of the non-transparent process, won't be able to get a very good answer for that now or I think uh, going forward unless something changes. So in other words, you're saying that this panel that has been set up to look into this evidence again isn't necessarily helping the NPA with that um, credibility deficit that yeah. they have with the public. Yeah, I mean, I think what the, I think the only way to really reduce the credibility deficit is to bring cases forward, to try them in court, uh, and and to and to strike good guilty verdicts. So, in terms of, for example, police in police being involved with illegal possession of arms, Operation Impi is this famous uh, story where the police were found to be taking guns and selling them to gangsters in the Western Cape. Now, I think many of your viewers will know, just in the last weekend, 50 people were shot 
dead in the Western Cape, 30 of them in the Cape Flats in a district there alone. There's some question around whether some of those guns might have come from police, uh, the police armory. Now, th this has no relation to General Boyson, but this does have a relation to the police. If more prosecutions could be brought forward by the NPA with regards to the sort of upshot of Operation Impi, then I think South African citizens would look and they would say, they're out there to protect us. They're out there, even if the people that are killing us are police or the people arming those who are killing us are police, they're still prepared to, to prosecute, they're still prepared to gather the evidence and to make it stick. So, brings me to the next point. She also went on to say to Chamila Batoy that there's a lot of corruption. She mm. admits that there's mm. a lot of corruption, not just in the NPA, but in the criminal justice cluster mm. as a whole. Mm. But just how far gone are we as a nation? Are we able to gauge that? Yeah, it is very difficult to gauge it. Uh, there's this Latin phrase, I'm probably going to mess it up, Cus custes custetares or something. It means who guards the guardians. And the, pro and the, and the thing is our, our constitution, the infrastructure of our constitution sets up various checks and balances so that the guardians of society, the criminal justice system, are themselves guarded. One of those institutions, for example, is the National Prosecuting Authority, sorry, is the Public Protector, those Chapter 9 institutions. And there's doubts and credibility with regards to that during the Zuma era and now going forward and people wonder whether sort of the SARS rogue unit scandal which also came from the Sunday Times and therefore is sometimes equated with the Cato Manor uh, death squad scandal whether that's not also just an invention and the pursuit of Pravin Gordon is further politically motivated and as I say there's I don't think there's a way for us to know just yet where things really stand. I think as long as people aren't going to jail, as long as prosecutions aren't sticking from the Zonda Commission, from the Nugent Commission, from these various commissions of inquiry that we have, as long as it remains rhetorical but you don't have people actually going to jail, we're not going to know if it's really working. General Boysen, um, oh, you appeared before uh, the Mohoro inquiry into the NPA. What is your next step? How will you be proceeding uh, with regard to clearing your name and whatever else that you need to do? Before I get to that, I would just like to comment on, on, on Gabriel's statement, which I agree mostly with. And, and uh, referring back to your uh, comment by yourself, um, that this decision was taken in an uh, intransparent way. The problem with the whole scenario is that a prosecution took place in a, very, in, uh, in, in a transparent manner, whereby I have minutes uh, detailing a meeting uh, with the Minister of Police at the time, and it was on the 8th of March uh, 2012, before the, uh, uh, the investigation had, uh, had commenced, um, where he gave instructions that we should be arrested within a week. So then, uh, my, my argument would be that why should we endure the injustice of, uh, of facing a trial, uh, a racketeering trial to take up to 10 years, and to sit in court and endure the injustice for 10 years just to be found out guilty? With regards to the corruption, I cannot agree more with, uh, with Gabriel. I'm in the pri private sector now, and I deal daily with, uh, with the police. Corruption is permeated in the police service, and it's very unfortunate. Um, regarding your question, yes, uh, obviously the charges will have to officially be withdrawn uh, in court. Um, so our attorney is busy with arrangements with the director of public prosecutions in Kwasir and Atel to, to, to do that arrangement. As far as clearing my name, I don't, uh, I think my, my name had already been cleared. Uh, if, if you see the narratives by the social media, um, the electronic media and the printed media, it's, I, I think it's accepted now that, that the prosecution of myself and the Cato man was a political, uh, uh, was a political thing and was unjustified. Well, we're out of time, but Gabriel, just 30 seconds or less, we talk about, you know, those implicated, but what about the families, uh, the victims, mm. uh, families, and, and, and how all of this is playing out, and they are really peripheral figures watching mm. on as all of this is playing out. Yeah, I know, that's for sure, and I think that's, a, that's a, such a classic problem in South Africa. Um, and, uh, yeah, I can, I can only reiterate that the, the only thing that a family can really hope for, you can't bring back the dead, but is a sort of transparent understanding of why the, the, why your loved ones have been lost. And I think that uh, if, if Boysen is vindicated, someone else needs to be tried. So the process cannot be over. 
Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, former KwaZulu uh, Natal uh, head Johan Boysen and Gabriel Krauser, uh, Palmer Trust Fellow and International Relations Institute Associate, uh, for talking to us about uh, that decision by the NPA to drop racketeering charges against uh, General Johan Boysen. That brings us up to news time. Leanne standing by with